What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Today uh, we're going to do something a little different. <clears throat> and what I want to do is look at some of the Vegas odds, like player props. So, you know, Vegas puts up obviously over unders for Aaron Rodgers' passing yards for the 2018 season at like 4,500 yards or something like that. So I wanted to take a deep dive. I haven't really looked at these too much, but I, I guess I'm kind of be I'll be looking at them in live time with you guys and kind of giving my analysis or breakdown or just pointing out things that I find very interesting that you guys can use. Now, obviously Vegas is not always right, but they're pretty damn close a lot of the time. If you bet a lot, you'll be like, holy shit, how are they always so close with over-unders? How are they always on top of this stuff? And it's not easy to win in these kind of gambles, hence why the industry makes a shit ton of money and Vegas is still the outstanding winner in the U versus Vegas battle. So today we're going to be doing um, just looking at the odds and kind of breaking down what I think they mean for the 2018 season. And I'll be looking at them on five dimes. Now, this is a website. This 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 website pretty much single-handedly supplied me with my partying money in college. I was I don't consider people good at gambling. There are a few select few people. A few select few. It doesn't even make fucking sense. Select few people that are good at gambling. I don't consider myself really one of them. I don't gamble that much anymore, but this website is the one I used in college. They're based out of like an inner, I think they're in like Sweden or some shit. So you can, you can definitely gamble on their website because international, they don't have to abide by the same laws, of course. Um, so I've been using this site for, for a long time. It's legit, but kind of like uh, MFL, if you play in the MFL 10 leagues, looks like their website was kind of created in like literally the day after the internet was created and they haven't really updated it. So apologize for the aesthetics of the website, but I promise this is a legit website that I've been gambling on for more than like five or six years. So uh, five dimes.eu. So they're based out of Europe, obviously. So they're five dimes, the number five dimes.eu to make an account. You know, I, I'm almost positive. You don't have to put like a credit card number or anything in. You can just make a user login name. I could possibly be wrong about that, but, um, but I'm pretty sure that's not what you have to do. So when you go in, you just go to the sports book if you want to look at this stuff. So you go to the sports book, and this will be you know all the things that you could possibly bet on. I just go to the football section, of course. NFL would just be the most, uh, re or not the most recent, but the next upcoming games. So I go to NFL props, and that is where you will find the player props, as well as team props. But we're obviously not going to really be looking at team props today. You can always go in and look at those on your own. I know the player props are all the way underneath the team props, so we're just going to head down there and go right to the players. Usually starts off with quarterbacks to see what we got. Okay, so if we are looking at these quarterbacks, I'm going I'm to take a minute to just look at everything, so just bear, bear vis me to look at this stuff. First thing I notice is... Carson Wentz's passing touchdowns over under 30 and a half. That is a lot of passing touchdowns considering um, his uh, considering how many how many quarterbacks usually throw for over 30 touchdowns in a given season. And it's usually not many. Aaron Rodgers usually does it. Tom Brady usually does it. Drew Brees. So they're putting someone who has an over under of passing yards at 4,000 um, and a touchdown over under of 30 and a half, which is kind of unusual because those two would suggest that either this should be higher or this should be lower. Um, and for you guys that don't gamble, here's how these numbers work over here. Now, if, if the number is plus, that means you're going to get more money for your bet, which means that's the underdog. So it's more likely that the minus number is going to happen. So uh, under 11 and a half interceptions for Carson Wentz is more likely to happen. That's the favorite if it's minus. That means that you everything is revolving around a $100 bet pretty much. Obviously, it's ratioed out depending on how much you bet. But if you see minus 140 here, that means you bet $140 to win $100. Um, so that would be the uh, the favorite because obviously you're going to get less money for the amount of money you bet. And since this is the underdog, the plus for you, uh, this is just plus 100, which means if you bet 100, you'll win 100. Um, and the reason that's the underdog is because uh, these Vegas bookies take a juice. If you've ever heard the term juice, that means that you're never going to get a fair one for one trade. They'll usually take a little extra. So if you're the underdog, you're usually getting uh, an extra minus 10 or whatever on the juice. So keep that in mind. The plus means that it is the underdog. So it's less likely to happen. If they're both minus like here, um, the 
one which is lower, of course, is the more likely to happen. So you have Carson Wentz under 30 and a half, more likely to happen, but it's very close. In this in this instance, you know, these numbers are super close, so it's not a big heavy favorite. Um, which is interesting to me is that the underdog is over 39.99 passing yards. So they're not expecting Carson Wentz to go over 4,000 passing yards, but they are expecting him to go over 30 touchdowns, which is Hard for me to imagine. I would say that if I were to bet one, it would be under on the Carson Wentz touchdowns because his 30 and a half touchdowns is a lot. To score 31 touchdowns is a lot of touchdowns to throw. His uh, touchdown rate last year was at a, a really, 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 really high. It was like 7.5%. So 7.5% of his attempts went for touchdowns. Um, and I was listening to a podcast from J.J. Zachariason today, and he was talking about how Carson Wentz is a player that he's going to avoid this year in fantasy. And it's because, like, he looked at, I think, since, like, 2000, there have been X number of quarterbacks that have thrown for over 7% of their passes for touchdowns. And on average, the following year, that number dips by, like, 2.5%. The NFL average was, like, 4.2% last year. Carson Wentz was at, like, 7.5%. So he was far, 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 far above that. And you could expect those numbers to come down a little bit. So I would take the under there. But these are just numbers to kind of, you know, play around with and, and think kind of outside of the box and creatively when you're looking at it from a fantasy perspective. Uh, ben Roethlisberger's touchdowns and over under for yards. You could see he ha- he is much higher than someone like Matt Ryan, right? He's getting about 300 more yards uh, on his over under as well as four more passing touchdowns. So they value him a lot more highly than Matt Ryan, which I think is probably correct. But um, they're probably someone that you guys would have very close to each other in rankings. Deshaun Watson, and they're pretty high in his passing touchdown over under. What they do say, though, is his interception, 17 and a half. I believe 17 and a half would have probably led the NFL last year. So the thing about Deshaun Watson, another reason that I'm trying to probably avoid Deshaun Watson is, okay, well, Deshaun, wow, Deshaun Kaiser threw that many interceptions? Damn, 22. Well, besides Kaiser, that would have been second highest in the NFL, 17 and a half, what Vegas has Watson pinned as. So, uh, what I will say is I'm expecting Deshaun Watson's interceptions to go to, to be pretty high this year. And usually when you have a quarterback that throws a lot of interceptions, um, it doesn't mean good things for his passing numbers. Now, you have guys like Deshaun Kaiser, 22 interceptions, only 11 touchdowns. Cam Newton, 16 interceptions, 22. Top four guys with the highest interception ratios outside of Ben Roethlisberger, I guess. So the top eight guys, Ben's the only one to go over 22 passing touchdowns. Um, And Ben's a guy who's just super high volume, right? He he has a lot of attempts, um, and I'm not sure we see that same thing for Deshaun Watson. So I do expect his interception numbers to go up and his passing touchdown numbers not to be at 26 and a half. Because if you look at player profiler, he throws a lot of interceptable passes. Like he should have had a lot more interceptions last year than he did. Um, You know, cornerbacks just happened to drop a lot of the balls. And those drives ended up being touchdowns, which will probably, you know, those those are very... Um, variant-esque numbers that that are volatile, right? And they go up and down year to year. So if he was really lucky with interceptions this year and he plays the same way, like those are predictive numbers, his wild throws, uh, then you could expect that number to rise up and that will obviously affect his his touchdown numbers overall. Another reason that I'm just kind of not that high on Deshaun Watson. Hmm. Eli, Eli. I'm only going to really look at the ones that super, super stand out to me. Jimmy Garoppolo, pretty high over-under for passing yards, 43.99. They expect him to go under passing touchdowns. They expect him to go over 23.5. Kirk, that's a pretty low passing yardage number for the amount of hype he's getting, 40.75, uh, 25.5 on his touchdown over-under. They expect him to go under on the 25.5. And, and you know what? These lines, I, I should I should have prefaced with this, these lines don't necessarily mean that Vegas expects them to go under. What Vegas books do is they try to even out the money. So if they see one side is getting heavily, heavily bet on, like a million dollars went on the over, they try to skew it so that the under looks more appetizing to betters. So those things are ha- like you know, m- the money that goes into it is a big um, is a big factor in what the lines are going to be. And I'm not really sure about the exact algorithms, but a lot of times you see that like oh, eighty percent of bets went on to one side of the wager. Uh, but 80% of the money went on the other side. What that means is that like the, the sharps is what they call them, right? The sharks, sharps, or sharks, whatever. Um, they're the ones who bet big money. The guys who think they have an advantage, like the Warren sharps of the world bet big money on certain things. Um, 
because they know something that the public doesn't or whatever. So that shifts the line because a, a huge portion of the money goes one way, but the public sees something that they think is, is something that they're taking advantage of and they put a lot of bets, but it's all like small amount of money. So like you and me would be betting like $20, $40, $50, $100. Uh, but a guy like Warren Sharp might put $10,000 on one side. So although one side might get 90% of the actual bets, one side, the other side might get 80% of the money. Um, and that's what swings these things, right? It's not always just like Vegas pinpoints uh, and over unders like we think this is going to happen. It's really shifting dependent on where the money and, and the bets actually go. Who? Let's see. Marcus Mariota over under 21 and a half touchdowns. Uh, you know, this is this is a point I want to make. So Mariota, let me see if they have Trubisky up here. Love to see what they uh, They don't have any Trubisky up here. That's That's unfortunate because I wanted to make a point with guys like Marcus Mariota and guys like Mitchell Trubisky, um, and you know these are the new shiny toys in the league with their new head coaches and their new offenses, and everyone's getting super excited about them. However, I've been saying this a few times. Like I was like Trubisky, what's best case scenario? I, I think you can quote me on this in a couple of my videos. Best case scenario is he hits like that twenty to twenty two passing touchdown mark, and they have you know Mariota right there. They actually have him as a favorite to go under twenty one and a half. Now what that means in the long term of things, obviously Mariota and Trubisky can add. Uh, fantasy points in other avenues, right, with their legs and, and rushing numbers and things, which is great. But this is giving you a reasonable projection of their touchdown passing numbers, which means you can't love every single weapon on the team. As much as you love Corey Davis and you love Rashard Matthews as an underrated receiver and you love Taewon Taylor as a sleeper and you love Delaney Walker at tight end, which I do, and you love Deion Lewis and blah, 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 and on and on and on. And the same exact thing can be said for Mitchell Trubisky and the Bears. The thing is, those passing touchdown numbers aren't that high. You know, so in reality, there's not going to be that much to go around. So unless a player is putting up 80 catches and, and 1,100, 1,200 yards, which, you know, maybe Corey Davis is certainly capable of, you know, he might, he's going to need like a 35% touchdown share of Mariota's passing touchdowns to be an elite fantasy option. So just keep that in mind, you know, when you love all these weapons on a certain team and you love the offense, think about the quarterback and think what's a realistic projection. Like Mariota, if he finishes with 3,450 yards and 21 touchdowns, there's not that much production to go around to the wide receivers. So you got to kind of factor that into, and I'm sure Trubisky's numbers are probably even lower than Mariota's. But again, Mariota has a lot of good weapons and he has that high, high, high rushing upside, which will mean he's still great in fantasy, but don't expect his passing number, numbers to be crazy. So when you're projecting these weapons, right, you have to have a low point and a high point, and you can't just assume that uh, it's all going to be optimistic and everything's going to go great. So that's the uh, that's the kind of point I want to make there with the guys like Mariota and Trubisky, where they have the shiny new toys and everyone's super excited about them. I think people stop being realistic and, and start projecting uh, best-case scenarios in those situations. So a little, little nervous about that. Um Alex Smith, I actually pointed this out on one of my tweets, I believe. Uh, so they have his passing yardage over under at 4150 or 4149 and a half. Um, and the under is pretty heavy favorite, but it's 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 an interesting number nonetheless because last year he set a career high, I believe it was, in passing yardage out of his like 12. Is this like, a, oh no, it's interceptions. Yeah, of his like, let me see, yep. Of his like 13 year career, last year was the first time ever he went over 4,000 yards. Um, and that was his career high. It was 4,042. So the fact that it's over under right now is at 4,149 gives me a pretty good uh, inclination to go on the under because I, I'm not going to say last year was an outlier year, but he was amazing on the deep ball. And it was very likely because he had weapons like Terry Kill and Travis Kelsey. Um, I mean, he goes over to Jay Gruden's offense. The only thing is like, Guys, he doesn't have the downfield weapons that he had. We have no idea if Jordan Reed's going to be healthy. Now their running game just got smacked with the fact that Geis is out for the year. Jameson Crowder is by no means a deep threat. We haven't really seen anything from Josh Doxson. We don't know how good Paul Richardson is going to be. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of question marks there. So I would easily take the under on Alex Smith. And I'm not on as high on him as a lot of people are in fantasy. as like a deep late round goy. <laughs> what else do we got here? Actually, I want to compare numbers with someone. No. Fudget. Aaron Rodgers passing yardage over under. Isn't that interesting how he actually has his over under for passing yardage is 40, 50 and a half. And Alex Smith is 100 yards higher than that. Obviously, the over is a pretty heavy favorite there, but that looks like an easy bet. At the same time, though, whenever something in Vegas looks easy, that usually means that you're looking at it in an incorrect way, or they know something that we do not know. So that kind of scares me a little bit. 
Interesting nonetheless, though. Jared Goff, over-under for passing yards, 39-25. Um, again, that touchdown over-under, just like we saw with, uh, who is it, Carson Wentz, 30 and a half, is pretty high for the number of yards that he's going to have. I think Jared Goff was a quarterback that had more touchdowns thrown behind the line of scrimmage, so he was basically just dinking off passes and letting guys make plays for him uh, than any other quarterback in the NFL last year. So I think his touchdown number was kind of fluky on the fact that it wasn't predictive and it wasn't him making amazing passes. Now, he might be a good quarterback, but that doesn't uh, excuse the fact that a lot of his touchdowns were not his doing, which are not repeatable, you know, or, or this, at least it's not something you can depend on. So what I actually really like... Um, these kind of player props for wide receivers because it gives you a realistic view on what you can project for yardage and what you can project for touchdowns and things like that. So Julio Jones, he is a heavy favorite to go over 1,400 yards, um, and he is a pretty heavy favorite to go over six touchdowns. So for everyone that's like scared of Julio Jones' touchdown dip, he is a favorite to go over six. So if he can end up with 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns, eight touchdowns, you're looking at a top three fantasy wide receiver easily, of course. And they have guys like Michael Crabtree, who, uh, I mean, no one's really that high in him, I don't think. So 775 receiving yards is probably about where I would peg it. Um, definitely not reaching until like the sixth round where I've seen him go. Uh, but he did look pretty good in the preseason game. I just don't think there's going to be enough volume for him to really make a big fantasy impact. Alshon Jeffrey, a heavy favorite to go eight over uh, under 875 receiving yards. Um, I would take the under there. I just, first of all, I mean, we don't know if he's going to be healthy for week one. Touchdowns over seven is the favorite. I'd probably pin him at about seven. What else? Brandon Cooks, receiving yards, over-under is 800. His touchdowns, five and a half. So, guys, if Brandon Cooks gives you 800 yards and five and a half touchdowns, you know, five or six touchdowns, that's what Vegas expects him to be at. Thus, guys, you, you got to stop drafting him, like, in the fourth, fifth round. He is just a cog in that, in that offense of the Rams that spreads the ball out and does not target one receiver. So... Um, Brandon Cooks, man, is just a player that I'm avoiding at his current cost. Oh, man, they are showing no love to Devonta Parker. His over-under for, for Tutties is 3.5. Jarvis Landry, over-under for yardage, nine nine forty nine and a half Touchdowns, I would take the touchdowns over 4.5. I actually think Jarvis Landry is becoming very undervalued, him uh, dipping into the, the late fifth round, sixth round in drafts. Hmm. I love this. Oh, this is amazing. Mike Evans touchdown over under five and a half, and the favorite is under. So they're expecting him to go under five and a half touchdowns, which is kind of crazy, I guess. But, I mean, he's so volatile year to year. It's another reason I avoid him because, you know, if he's not getting 90 catches and he's not going over, like, 1,300, 1,400 yards like a Julio Jones is, and his touchdown over under is five and a half with the favorite on the under. So Mike Evans is a guy I'm avoiding. Unless he falls, like, deeper into the third round, I'm okay with that. Like, around, like, pick 26 all the way up to, like, 35. But there's no way I'm reaching in that, um, that like, early 20 range where I see some people doing so. I think that's a huge mistake. Yes. So Gronk. Gronky, Gronky, Gronk. Receiving yardage over under 10.59.5. Touchdowns over 8.5 is the favorite. Those are monster numbers from the tight end position, guys. And the fact that Vegas has those as the favorites... 10, 59 and a half, those are actually even odds on, on, you're getting even odds on both under and over of that one, but touchdowns over eight and a half is uh, really good to see because Gronk is a guy who I have been pegging as like his own elite category in the tight end position. I know a lot of guys like Travis Kelsey, a lot of guys even like Zach Ertz, but if Gronk is playing, you know, his full 16 games, man, you are getting an absolute monster of a player. Um, and I think they're, you know, I don't know. I, I just like, I'm willing, I'm not willing to bet on him staying healthy, but like I am, I'm very okay drafting him. If he keeps dropping in drafts, those are, those are some large numbers. If you get these types of numbers out of Gronk, which they expect to see, uh, you're looking at a really good year. Same with T.Y. Hilton, 1050 receiving yards, a heavy, heavy favorite. So they're probably the even odds are probably be around 1150, 1200 and touchdowns over six and a half, which is the favorite. So if you're getting 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns from P.Y. Hilton, or 1,150, 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns, you are going to be looking at a very good year, and you're getting them at a super value uh, in the third round of drafts right now. Wow, Terry Kill's over-under is really staggering. 1,000 yards and seven, and they, think, they expect them to go over, over seven and a half touchdowns. I would easily nail the under on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> and these all are based on the fact that they you see here like must play in week one for action to take place. So if you were to bet this and then Doug Baldwin like sits out week one, the bet would be canceled. I mean, you wouldn't lose your money, obviously, but the bet would just be canceled. Wow, so this is interesting. Look at this. So compare Emmanuel Sanders and Larry Fitz. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders is over under for yards is 925 and a half. Larry Fitz's is 850 and a half. Uh, and they both have an over under touchdown total of four. Um, both have favorites of going over four. But nonetheless, they are not that high on Larry Fitzgerald this year. And I wonder why that is. 850 and a half. He's been over. Um, let me check these numbers. I'm going to check the yardage number. I mean, the, the over-under for the touchdowns is not crazy considering um, he's gotten 6-6 six and six and if they expect a decline. But he's gone over 1,000 yards in three straight seasons, and all of a sudden his over-under is at... Um, his over-under is at... What was it? 850 and a half. So that's, that's an interesting note that Vegas actually expects Fitz to dip off this year. Um, and I'm not sure if they're just like hedging their bets against, you know, eventually father time catching up or not, but interesting nonetheless, if you are someone who believes in Vegas. I also want to, I also put out another video this morning recapping week one of the, uh, week one of the, I apologize. I'm just looking at a text I just got in. Sorry. Um, oh, recapping week one of the NFL preseason. Uh, so I went went through all like usage stats and and how many snaps each like the starter got and the backup got and shit like that. Good video for you to catch up on if you missed it this morning. That is obviously on my channel. Just look at the, the latest video. Let's move on to some running bikes. Devonta Freeman. Rushing yard over under is 959.5. Touchdown over under is 10. And he's a favorite to go over 10 touchdowns. Boom. That's why I love Devonta Freeman, man. Because if he's healthy for 16 games, even if you get 15 games out of him, he's a lock for 1,200 to 1,300 total yards and double-digit touchdowns in this offense. Because he plays in the passing game, he plays on the goal line, and he gets touches in between the 20s, man. And this is just rushing yards, 959 and a half. This is over-under. Um, so you can expect, you know, another 300 to 400 yards through the air as well. Um, so I love Devonta Freeman. A lot of people are worried about his, his injury history, but he was one of the most durable running backs in the previous two years, 2017. Obviously, he had a bad year with the sprained MCL, and I think it was a PCL. The concussion history is definitely a little bit of a concern, uh, considering if he takes one more big hit, it could extend him being out a little more, but I'm, I'm not really going to bank or avoid players because of concussion history. Um, but this is, you know, another reason I love Devonta Freeman, because I just think his floor is so safe as long as he's healthy. <laughs> this is interesting. They have Alvin Kamara receiving yards and his rushing yards over under. So rushing yards, 900, uh, pretty heavy favorite to go under that. Receiving yards, 755 over. So they're looking at about 1,600 total yards for Alvin Kamara and 12 and a half touchdowns as his over under. Same thing with Dalvin Cook, 12 and a half touchdowns. I'm not going to really analyze everything for you guys, but I want to show you what they have on there because I think a lot of you guys will find this helpful or at least interesting nonetheless. I'd like to, I don't, I mean, not all my content is completely like information filled. I try to make it as information filled as possible, but I like to make it interesting and kind of vary the content as much as possible to give you guys different looks about, you know, the research that I do um, and things like that. Derrick Henry, rushing yards over under 875, heavy favorite on the over, touchdowns over under is seven. Um, so that's interesting because Derrick Henry, uh, if you put him about 900 yards as the over under, uh, how much do you think he gets involved in the passing game? I really don't think he catches more than like 15 to 20 passes this year, which will probably be about 150 to 200 total yards. So they'll probably pin him at about 1,000 to 1,100 total yards. Um, and I don't know, touchdowns could probably go between seven and eight. So, I mean, Derrick Henry's a guy that he, he he's someone that I, I'm going to end up drafting somewhere just because I'm fading him enough in almost every league that I'm going to be wrong on things. And I realize that I should probably, you know, I, players that I hate, I always try to end up rostering them at least one league because, you know, like I said, you're going to be wrong. So it's good to have backup to hedge your bets. 
Ping. Okay. What else do we got here? McKinnon, rushing yardage, 859. That would be fantastic. If you got 859 rushing yards out of McKinnon, because he's going to put together another 500, 600 yards via the air probably, um, that would be great. And he's a heavy favorite to go over eight and a half touchdowns. That would be a monster fantasy season. What else we got? Leonard Fournette, over under rushing yards, 1149 and a half. I like that. Touchdowns over under 10 and a half with a favorite on over 10 and a half. Fournette's going to be an absolute animal if he stays healthy. And, you know, if you watch the video I did with Dr. Jesse Morse, obviously there's a little bit of concern there, but the fact that he's dropped a lot of weight shows me um, or tells me that that he is less likely to get injured. And I've seen some videos of him in practice. He, he's definitely looking leaner, definitely looking more explosive. And if he can stay on the field, he's going to be an absolute beast. Quan Barkley, rushing yards over under 1099. Um, it's a pretty heavy favorite on the over. I would actually take the under on the rushing yards of 1,100 yards, only because like I think he's very much capable of doing it, but I don't think they're going to be in enough game scripts where Barkley is going to run the ball 20 times. I, th I, see, I could totally see him getting 20 touches a game, but like six touches a game being through the air. You know, give him like 13 to 15 carries plus five or six catches a game. That'll get you to 350 touches by the end of the year. However, is that going to be enough to get him to 1,100 rushing yards? I don't think so. So I would go with the under on rushing yards only because I think he's going to do so much damage catching the ball because he's so deadly out of the backfield that way. Kareem Hunt. Yeah, they're pretty high in Kareem Hunt. They think he's going to go over 10 and a half touchdowns. That's interesting considering Spencer Ware very, very well might be the goal line back there. Same thing with Melvin Gordon. Christian McCaffrey. So they are rushing yardage over under 625 yards. Touchdowns over under seven and a half. That's that's total touchdowns, guys. You'll you'll see them separate it. They see like you see rushing yards specifically, and then when they say touchdowns, they don't say rushing touchdowns or receiving, they mean total touchdowns. Zeke, look at this. This is why you have to love Zeke, because he's a heavy favorite to go over 1,400 yards and 10 and a half touchdowns. Love that. They are not high on Marshawn Lynch. They have him as a favorite to go under 650 rushing yards. But they have him going over five, five and a half touchdowns. That's interesting. I, I think they just understand that the Raiders are just going to force Doug Martin the ball like fucking assholes. Uh, but interesting nonetheless, Todd Gurley, over under 15 and a half touchdowns. Uh, I would love someone to go back and see the last time a player hit 16 touchdowns or more because Gurley had, I think, what do you have, 19 last year? Let me, let me check that. Gurley had 19 touchdowns last year. I would like someone to go back and check when was the last time someone had 16 or more total touchdowns and then was able to repeat that the following year. I almost feel like that answer might be zero people, possibly one. So I would take the under on 15 and a half touchdowns for Gurley. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but I don't think it's likely to happen. And the rest are team props. <laughs> this is the next coach, next, next coach fired. Dirk Cutter and Hugh Jackson are the favorites there. Uh, I think they're going to give Hugh Jackson the full year to see what he could do with this brand new offense. Uh, Dirk Cutter deserves to be fired because he's straight trash don't at me please um so I, I would put money on dirt cutter on this motherfucker what else do we got here you can even bet on like doug peterson imagine like <laughs> why would anyone put money on kyle shanahan sean mcclair doug peterson being fired or bill belichick that'd be wild dude imagine like tomorrow we just got a report that bill belichick was fired i don't know what people do i feel like fan i actually wouldn't even go on twitter twitter would be so fucking annoying for so long Sorry, let me check my tweeter. Um, I'm just looking at a lot of things because I put out that that first video with uh, talking about the behind the scenes of the fantasy football industry. Um, with Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers yesterday, and uh, got really good reactions. A lot of you guys really, really liked that video. I do have a question though. If you if you've watched the video up to this point, would you rather me do the fantasy football industry like behind the scenes industry videos like I did with Andy yesterday, uh, multiple times a week? Or would you rather have like once a week where I release them, maybe like one of those interviews every Tuesday? Or would you rather Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, like something like that? So let me know how you would like those videos to come out. So I don't want to like ruin, I don't want to ruin them and put three of them because my plan right now is to have them Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. 
but I don't want to saturate it to the point where you don't even like enjoy them anymore. And there's just too much of them coming out. Um, and there's just too much content to keep up with. So let me know if you'd rather have it once a week, twice a week, three times a week, please. That would help me out and just drop a comment down below. Um, that's all it is for the player props. I'm not going to go into the team props because that's not really fantasy related. One other thing I will say though, that I kind of want to go to is when you're streaming defenses, uh, there, here's something I like to do and I'll go to, um, I'll go to the games that are being played that week. So the regular bets and when I'm streaming defenses, what I like to do is find teams and these are preseason. So the over under is going to be low, but you want to find a game one. I, my, I have three pillars when I'm streaming a defense one, uh, is taking the home team. So the team on the bottom here is always going to be the home team. Two, you must <coughs> take a favorite. So if they're getting, they're giving points. So if you're minus three, that means you're a favorite to win by three points. And three, you want a low over under. So a low amount of points scored. So for instance, the Patriots would be a good pick here because they're home, they're a favorite, and they're a low over under. But when you're when you're streaming, right, like you want to find the teams that are the biggest favorites. So the the favorites to win by the most points. We're going to pretend like we don't see that one. Okay, so the Vikings would be a great... Oh, this is for actual week one. They have these spreads here. So the Ravens would be a great team to stream here. And I've actually been talking about how Ravens and Saints are my favorite two teams. So the Ravens are at home against the Buffalo Bills. They are seven-point favorites or six-and-a-half-point favorites. The over-under is 41. That's very low. So uh, an over-under around 40, 41 is a low. Uh, low over-under average is probably around 44. Uh, so you want to look for low over unders, but you know if you have if you have a Saints team that's getting or that's giving ten and a half points or nine and a half points, they're heavy heavy favorites. I'm cool with that. Obviously the Bucks are going to be without Winston, so you have the Saints at home getting nine and a half points. That's a lot, so they're heavy favorites. You could just look at this is what we call the money line. You could just bet on them straight up winning. Um, the over under is very high, so they expect a lot of points to be scored, but that's probably from the Saints side. And uh, those are what I look for in the defenses. So home favorites. Uh, with a low over under total and uh, that's pretty much going to wrap up the video for today guys again five dimes.eu if you enjoyed thumbs up the video let me know again how you want those industry videos to come out throughout the week um subscribe to the channel if you're new we're always trying to mix up the content and give you good stuff throughout the season and uh i'll see y'all on the next episode peace